Hello everyone and welcome to your practice today. So today's class is going to be a really um, short, slow core ignition class. So it's all, all about just creating awareness and engagement in our core, um, which is one of the most beneficial things I find um, that I get from movement. Um, anytime I get that core engagement, I achieve it, I connect with it on a deeper level, is when the rest of um, movement in my life becomes a little bit more easy. So let's start, I'm gonna grab a block. If you don't have a block, don't worry, but you might wanna grab maybe a book or something just to um, elevate your hips on to start class. And then as well, we're gonna be using it toward the end of class as well. So if you wanna elevate your hips, and sit in hero pose. You don't have to elevate too much. Um, sitting on your shins, knees together, stack shoulders over your hips. Sit up nice and tall through the spine. And we're just gonna start by connecting in with the breath. So try to connect with your ujjayi, your yogic breath. Slight restriction at the back of the throat, creating that oceanic quality to the breath. And that sense of control as well to the breath. See if you can increase depth. Increase quality and connection. As you focus your energy on the bottom of the exhale, see if you can get that connection also to the pelvic floor. So with each bottom of exhale, you're gonna feel that gentle lift up and in of the lower belly, the pelvic floor muscles. Don't force anything, just allow it to be that natural engagement. So we're gonna start to move our pelvis. So you're gonna start to almost imagine your pelvis to be a bowl and it's full with water and you're just gonna gently, really slowly rock the water from side to side, front to back, creating this circular motion in the pelvis. Like you're drawing a circle with your sit bones rocking side forward, side back, side forward, side back, and then starting to roll in the opposite direction, starting to feel all points of contact in the pelvic floor. So really bringing your attention to the hips, to the pelvic floor muscles, and allowing it to become a little bit more acute as you really notice. Again, in the opposite direction, I want you to circle that movement, stirring almost the energy in the lower belly, starting to wake up slowly the muscles, the abdominal wall, the breath, and again, last time, in that opposite direction. starting to awaken from the lower spine. Okay, and then slowly just allowing that circular motion to slow down until you come to stop. Okay, bring your arms all the way out in front. I want you to bring your hands to prayer at the heart and push your arms out in front. As you do that, I want you to scoop in through the belly, dropping your tailbone, almost curling Exhale fully here, and as you inhale, I want you to draw your elbows back, lean back through your fingers, and open into this cactus shape. So spread that space across your collarbones, inhale into the front body, exhale again, hands to prayer as you scoop through the spine, as you drop the tailbone, as you drop your chin toward your chest. Inhale again, draw back through the elbows, tilt your fingers up, tilt your fingers back, spread that space across your collarbones, exhale to engage through the front body as you open through the back, back body. Two more times like that. Inhale, pull the elbows back, tilt your fingers up and back. Exhale to round, squeeze all the still air out, dropping your chin. One last time, inhale to lift back, open across the chest. Exhale to scoop and round. 
Inhale, you're gonna pull back through the elbows and as you exhale, I want you to drop your right elbow underneath your left into a cactus shape. Inhale to lift your elbows, lift your gaze slightly. As you exhale, I want you to round through the spine to so drop your elbows down, tuck your chin and squeeze all the stellar out. Inhale, open your arms into a T shape. Your palms can face down. And we're gonna simply make these little circles with the arms. So just keeping awareness in the belly, you wanna keep that core engagement. And try to make the circles really small and fast. So you're gonna feel this in the top of your shoulder, hopefully. And we're gonna continue this little movement. All done. Try to extend that through your fingertips, starting to warm up into the upper body slightly here so that we can focus more on the core once we get into class. Okay, and then start to reverse the direction of the circle. Try to pick up the speed as best you can. Don't create stiffness, but definitely you should feel that engagement in your upper shoulder, the top of your shoulder. Continue it here for 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Reach back through your arms, open your chest, inhale. Exhale, wrap your left arm under your right cactus shape again. You're going to inhale, or sorry, eagle shape. Lift your elbows up toward the sky. Create a little baby arch through the spine. Exhale, round into the back as you drop your elbows toward your pubic bone. Well done. Inhale, lift up, release your arms. Open the arms, spread them all the way out, and then release everything down. We're going to come into table. So you can release away from the block for a moment. We're going to bring the hands under the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, tops of feet to mat. As you inhale, I want you to pull the heart forward, spread the collarbones as you tilt your sit bones up. Exhale, we're going to round into the back. So drop your tailbone, tuck your chin toward your chest. This time you're going to inhale, but push down into the tops of your feet. Pull your heart forward, hover your knees just away from the mat. Exhale, or <laughs> round, don't drown, round into your back, drop your sit bones down and keep the knees hovering. Again, if you can keep this hover as we move through our cat-cow do, inhale, pull the heart forward, find that gentle compression in your middle spine, exhale to dome into the back, drop your tailbone, keep those arms fully active one more time, inhale to arch, pull the heart forward, feel that core engagement. Exhale to round. Well done. Inhale to pull it forward. Drop your knees toward the mat. And we're going to slide our shins back and drop our hips really slowly toward our wrists. So coming into this modified up dog. Create a little micro bend in your elbows. And then slowly start to bend the elbows. Drop your pubic bone to the mat. Coming into this high cobra. Engage through the legs. Engage through the back body. Find that nice opening in the chest. Draw your shoulder blades down the back. Heavy through the pubic bone. Puppy pose. We're going to shift our hips all the way back. Slide our hands all the way out in front. So hips are stacked over your knees, chest and chin toward the mat. If that's too much for you, your forehead can rest on the mat. So we're just going to create a little bit of space now in the chest. Length through the waist. You should feel that compression really shift toward your upper spine, which a lot of us aren't used to. A lot of us don't have a lot of mobility in our upper spine, so take it slow. If you need to take a break, do. If you need to modify, do. Like I said, you can bring your forehead toward the mat, or you can even rest your forehead on the block. That will ease the compression. Soft inhales, soft exhales, just allowing everything to melt, allowing gravity to do the work here, the weight of your body to do the work. You don't actually have to push anything or force anything. Just notice with each exhale, maybe the weight of your chest heavier toward the mat. Okay, and then come forward into Sphinx. So we're going to lift our chest slide forward onto our belly. So we're going to come into a forearm plank here. 
So we're gonna get straight into that core work. I want you to zip up your inner legs. So like you have one leg, your inner ankles are squeezing together. Now we're gonna come into a forearm plank on the tops of our feet. If that is way too much for you, cause it is quite advanced, you can tuck your toes or even just come onto your knees. So when you curl up, you could curl up from your knees, okay? So let's see if we can do it on the tops of the feet. If not, you can modify elbows or underneath the shoulders. You're gonna lift from the lower belly. When you're ready, squeeze those inner ankles toward each other. Squeeze your glutes, inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, push down and round. So I want you to hold it here, squeezing through your inner thighs. And as you squeeze your inner thighs toward each other, as you squeeze your inner ankles toward each other, you're gonna feel that engagement up through your midline, up into your core, tuck your tailbone, engage your glutes. Feel like your elbows are drawing back toward your toes. You're squeezing your elbows in toward each other, lift up to your quads. We're holding it here for at least another 20 seconds. So if you need to drop to your knees, do. It doesn't matter what level you're at, I just want you to feel the engagement through your core, feel effort, whatever your maximum is, we're gonna hold for another 10, nine, eight, chest forward, six, gaze toward your thumbs, five, four, three, two, sitting it back into child's pose, drop your knees. We're gonna come all the way back into child, sweep your arms back toward your heels or your ankles, interlock your fingers just above the, the back and extend back through the knuckles. So just opening across the chest and the shoulders, full inhales, full exhales. Well done, release your hands. So this time we're gonna come to the elbows again. We're gonna be piking our hips. So what I want you to do is come into, um, from your knees, just drop your elbows to the mat. Make sure you're measuring shoulder width. If you have poor shoulder mobility or you're a little bit weak in your shoulders, feel free to bring your hands into a fist, interlocking the fingers. Otherwise, hands, palms face down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive our hips up toward the sky like a dolphin, and we're gonna take a little shift forward and back. If that's too much, option B is to come into your plank, walk your feet in, and walk your feet out, okay? So if the hold in your dolphin is too much, that is your second option. If you feel like it's still a lot, you can bring a block between your elbows and squeeze into the block with your elbows. That can be a nice help as well. So when you're ready, push down through your elbows, walk your toes in as close as you can toward your elbows, gazing down between your forearms, and we're gonna simply shift forward, shift back. So use your toes to shift forward and shift back. So you're gonna really feel that lift from the core. Push down through your inner hands, your thumbs. Make sure your elbows are pulling in toward each other. And you're feeling that lift up through the hips. Come from the abdominal wall. Continue for 10, nine, eight, Seven, if it's too much, you can bring your gaze back towards your toes. Five, four, you can do your walk in and out. Three, two, and one. Drop your knees to the mat, well done. Sit back towards your heels. Bring your hands behind your back again, this time just chasing the mat with your knuckles. Hold it here, space in the heart. Maybe take a little mini back bend. Okay, downward facing dog. So I'm gonna get you to plant your palms and come into that down dog shape. Okay, it's definitely starting to warm up. So when you're ready, meet in that down dog shape. Feel free to pedal into your knees. Create some movement for yourself if that's what you need. And then when you're ready, we're gonna inhale, extend our right leg to this guy. As you exhale, I want you to bring that right knee towards your right armpit, holding it here. So what I'd like you to do is slide it down towards your wrist, hold, and then slide it back up towards your armpit. That's one, we're doing five. Lower down towards your wrist, drop the hips equally. Exhale, drive it all the way up. Three more times, lower it down, hold and drive it back up. That's three, two more, lower it down, hold, 
So sliding it down, slide it back up, four. Last time, slowly lower it down and then slide it back up. Well done, drive your knee towards your chest and then step your right foot all the way through between the hands. So coming into this low lunge shape, just pull your heart forward, feeling that opening through the left hip flexor. We're gonna inhale here, pull the heart forward, exhale, shift it back into your half splits. As you do that, I want you to see if you can hover the right heel just for a millisecond, and then come forward again. Inhale, pull the heart forward. Exhale, shift it back, see if you can hover the right heel above the mat. So you really need to round into your back, scoop your belly in, plug that right femur bone into its socket. You can use blocks underneath the hands here so that you have more space. Inhale, pull it forward. Exhale, lean it back and see if you can hover. Again, two more. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, lean it back, hover. Last time, inhale, come forward. Exhale, lean it back, hover. See if you can hold five, four, three, two, one. Drive down through the right heel. Come forward, coming straight into a side angle. So tuck your left toe, lift your left knee, and then drop your left heel to the mat. I want you to keep the right fingers to the outside of the right foot. Sweep your left arm all the way back, up and around so that it extends over your left ear. So extend your tailbone towards your left heel, reach through your left side body, extend forward through the fingertips, feel both sides of your abdominal wall engaged here, lengthening, try not to crunch down, we're extending forward, strong through your legs, breathe here for three, Full deep inhales for two. Try to rotate that left shoulder open a little bit more. Well done. One, come all the way up into warrior two. Sit deeply down into the right knee. Fingertips extend out away from each other. Drive down through your heels. Engage through your glutes. Extend your tailbone down toward the mat. Okay, we're coming into Trikonasana, so I want you to straighten into the right leg. You might toe heel the back foot in slightly, or you might keep the wider stance. You're going to reach forward and down, right hand will find your right shin, ankle or mat, left arm extends toward the sky. Again, tuck your tailbone so you have that length out of the lower back. And then if you can, you're going to bring the right arm behind the back internally rotating that right shoulder and using your core strength here. So hips are pushing toward the back of your mat. Crown of head is extending forward. Think about space between that right hip crease and right armpit. Hold. This is where it starts to feel quite spicy. Breathe for three. Lift the lower belly up and in for two. And one, slowly come all the way up to standing. Bring both arms behind the back. Pivot your toes so that they point in slightly. So pigeon toe the feet. Reach for opposite elbow with opposite hand. Inhale, lift up through the heart. Exhale, fold it forward. Now, if this is way too much for you, feel free to bring your fingers to the mat. Let's see if you can come into this fold without using your arms. So really strong through the legs. Allow the feet, almost like they're trying to squeeze in toward each other. That's going to help you activate your inner inner thigh muscles and your inner thigh muscles travel all the way up through the pelvic floor connecting with the core muscles so trying to get that engagement hold it here for five full deep inhales and exhales at the bottom of each exhale remember that pelvic floor lift for four three two and release the hands, fingertips to mat, inhale, peel your heart forward, exhale, walk your hands forward into a lizard lunge. So I want you to bring that right foot wider of the right hand, pull your heart forward. So we're gonna try to do those hovers here in our lizard lunge. So again, you can bring your hands to blocks. We're gonna inhale, exhale, try to push down through the hands as you hover the right foot and then bring it down, back down, four more. Inhale, pull the heart forward, exhale, push down, hover. Again, inhale, exhale, push down, hover the right foot. Two more, inhale, exhale, push down, round your upper back, hover. Last time, inhale, pull it forward, exhale, push down, round, hover. Well done. And then we're going to bring our left hand maybe to a block. 
this will make it a little bit easier for this next transition. So we're going to shoot the left leg through and then step it back. So right elbow can come into this cactus shape. We're going to inhale, exhale, shoot the left leg through, lower the hip slightly and then extend it back. Inhale, heart forward, exhale, shoot the left leg through and then step it back. Inhale, exhale, shoot it through, step it back. Inhale, exhale, shoot it through and step it back one more time. Inhale, exhale, shoot it through and then step it back. Well done. Plant your right hand. Plant your left hand. Coming into a three-pointed plank. So I'd like you to bring your right leg back in line with your right hip. Extend your left arm forward. So we're going to balance here. Hold for five, four, three, Two, drop your left heel to the mat, bring your left elbow and your right knee to touch, and then extend your right leg out to hover, extend your left arm overhead. Hold it here for five. If it's too much, ground the outer edge of the right foot for four, three, two. Now extend your right leg back behind your left leg, bending into the left knee slightly, and then kick it out in front for five. Extend it back, out in front for four back, out in front, three, well done, keep going, back, out in front, two, back, point through the toe, one, ground your left hand, extend your right leg toward this guy, well done, inhale, any variation of your vinyasa, so if you want a handstand hop, maybe move through a three-pointed chaturanga, whatever feels good for you, up dog, down dog, okay, Take a nice full deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, open the mouth. Okay, so we're gonna do that on the left side. When you're ready, you're gonna inhale, reach your left leg to the sky. Exhale, bring your left knee to your left armpit and hold. So we're gonna slide that left knee down toward the left wrist. Slow and controlled, hold it here. And then glide it back up. Suction thigh to belly. Lower it down, hold and then glide it back up for four. Slide it down, hold. Slide it up three. Well done, really rounding into your back, lower down. Lift it up two, lower down, last time. Lift it up one, bring the thigh towards center. Step the left foot through between the hands. Drop your right knee to the mat, so we're coming into this low lunge shape. Heart is extending forward. Just take a moment as you find your breath. Slow down the heartbeat or the heart rate. So we're going to inhale, pull our heart forward. As you exhale, you're going to lean back, come onto your fingertips. Remember, you can use blocks. Hover the left heel if you can, and then ground it down. Inhale, pull the heart forward, bend into the left knee. Exhale, shift back, hover the left leg, and come forward. Inhale. Exhale, move it back for three. Inhale. Exhale, move it back for two. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, move it back. Well done, last time. Hold it here for five. Breathe for three, two, and one. Bend forward into the left knee. Side angle, tuck the right toe, drop the right heel, bring your left fingers to the outside of the left foot. Sweep your right arm forward and over the right ear. So really getting into the inner thighs. Imagine like you're drawing that left heel toward the arch of the right first foot and vice versa, grounding down into the outer edge of that right foot, firm rooting. Extend your right arm forward, feel all sides of your core, of your abdominal wall working for three strong legs for two. One, come all the way up into your warrior two. We're gonna hold it here. Shoulders soft, lengthen the tailbone down. Legs are strong. Energy, energetically reaching through your fingers. Sink into the left knee for a little bit more depth. Really feel the lower belly lift up and in. Well done, straightening into the left leg. We're gonna come into Trikonasana. So if you need to shorten the distance between the feet, you can start to reach forward, reach forward. When you cannot reach anymore, left hand will rest on either your shin, ankle, block or mat, right arm to the sky. And again, we're gonna internally rotate that left arm or left shoulder and bring the arm behind the back, holding it here. Trying to keep that extension forward through the spine. 
that reaching back of the outer right hip, strong, firm grounding through the legs, right arm extending up to where this guy holding it here. Remember, core is active, tailbone is tucking for three. Breathe for two. One, slowly come all the way up. Both arms behind the back again. Interlocking hands to elbows. Point your toes in, inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold it forward into that wide leg forward fold. So again, we're trying to use our core strength here to tilt your sit bones up, to fold a little bit deeper. Full inhales, full exhales. Okay, if you want to stay, you can stay here. If you'd like to come into your headstand, if that's in your practice, either tripod or into your dolphin, you can bend, bring the crown of the head to the mat and slowly push down through the hands to lift up into your headstand. So whatever variation of your headstand is in your practice, hold wherever you are, whether it's the fold, whether you're doing knee tuck, whether you're playing, hold for three, breathe for two. If you're in tripod, remember those elbows stay at that 90 degree shape, so don't splay out for one. Slowly lowering all the way back down. Inhale, pull your heart forward. Exhale, walk your hands toward the front of your mat into your lizard lunge. So we're gonna do those hovers again. Inhale, pull the heart forward. You can push your hands into mat or blocks. Exhale, hover the left foot. Again, inhale, ground the foot, pull the heart forward. Exhale, push down, hover. Well done, inhale, pull the heart forward. Exhale, push down, round, hover. Last two, inhale. Exhale, hover, rounding. Last time, inhale. Exhale, push down, hover. Ground, remember you can use your block. You don't even need to, just gives you a little bit more space to bring the right leg through. Pull your left elbow back into a cactus, inhale. Exhale, shoot the right leg through, dropping down almost into a pistol. Step it back, inhale. Exhale, shoot the right leg through. Again, step it back, inhale. Exhale, shoot it all the way through. Step it back, inhale. Exhale, shoot it through. You should feel this in the core. Step it back, inhale. Exhale, last time, shoot it through. And then step it back, well done. Grounding into your hands, you can remove that block of your using it. Three-pointed plank. Left leg extends back in line with your left hip. Reach the right arm forward, hold. For five, use the left hamstring and the left glute. Four, three, two. Drop your right heel to the mat, hug your elbow towards your knee, and then extend your left leg out to hover. Right arm extends over the head. So if you want, you can ground into the outer edge of the left foot for five, four, three, Two, now bend slightly into the right knee as you extend the left leg behind the right and then kick it out in front for five. Extend and kick four. Extend, kick three. Extend, kick two. Extend, kick one. Right hand finds the mat, three-legged dog. Tiger curl and then reach left leg up. Again, you can come through handstand. You can come through any variation of your vinyasa. Inhale. Lower, up dog, downward facing dog. Tuck toes, lift hips. Well done, full deep inhales, full deep exhales. When you're ready, we're gonna come to our bum. So I want you to come all the way through, sit down. And this is where, again, you might grab your block, bring it between your inner thighs. So I'm gonna bring the block on the skinnier side. The more you lean back, the more challenging this is gonna be. So we're gonna simply do Russian twists. I want your knees to stay in line with each other. So the block is gonna be really helpful in keeping the pelvis stable so that we're really twisting from the belly, okay? And we're gonna do it for about 90 seconds. So it's gonna be as many reps as you can in that 90 seconds. Bring your hands to purr at the heart, inhale. Exhale, twist, just extend your arms, tap the, hand, the hands to the mat, inhale. Exhale, twist and tap. So squeeze into that block and we're gonna just continue to twist left and right. So you'll notice if the block is moving, that your thighs are moving. If your thighs are moving, your pelvis is moving. So let's see if we can keep the lower body as still as possible. Remember, if you lean further back, it's gonna be more challenging 
Each time you come through center, bring the hands to prayer at the heart. Well done. You've done about 30 seconds. Have another minute to go. Keep it up. <clears throat> if you need to take breaks, you can. Or just sit up a little bit higher. Okay, so if you need to make it a little bit easier, just sitting up taller. Or if you need to make it harder, lean back a little bit more. Well done. <sighs> Keep going. Keep that block being squeezed into the inner thighs. Super active. <sighs> Keep going for 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Well done. 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, keep going, 6, 5, 4, squeeze into the block, 3, 2, and 1, well done. Okay, so we're going to lower down onto our back, and I'd like you to lower down, bring the block with you if you have it, and you're going to elevate your hips onto the block. So I want the block supporting the lowest part of your spine, the tailbone. And then if you can, kick out one leg and then play around with kicking out both legs. We're just going to stretch through the front of our body. So see how this feels. If it's too much for you, don't worry. You could even come into a restorative uh, bridge pose. So just elevating your hips, soles of feet to mat, and stretching out through the front body bending into the knees. We're just taking a few minutes here just to be still, so try your best just to focus your energy. Notice how it feels around the front of your hips, the lower belly. Hopefully this feels quite nice for you, stretching out through the front body. Now you can stay here if you want to take it a little bit deeper. This can be quite awkward, so it might not be for everyone, but you're gonna walk your feet in, try to reach for your ankles, so really trying to tuck your toes to the mat. I like to hold onto my feet, and then start to slide your entire body forward, okay? So that the knees are now pointing forward. You're gonna get quite a deep stretch in the front of your quads, the front of your hip flexors, Everyone will be at a different range here, so just making sure there's no pain. If there's pain, you come straight out of it. You can even bring your arms all the way up overhead. You can have the lower back supported in this um, bent knee variation, or you can have the bum just resting on the backs of your heels almost. Breathe it here. If you want to come into wheel from here, you can, so you can plant your palms and push all the way up into wheel to open up even more through the front body. Make sure you're squeezing through inner thighs still. You're engaging through your glutes. Breathe for five, wherever you are, for four, three, two, and slowly lowering all the way down. If you have that block there, you can remove the block. Just allow the soles of feet to come to mat. Knees knock in toward each other. Soft belly breaths. Well done. Keep your feet wide. Bring both knees toward the left. Maybe you cross your left ankle over your right. You can bring your arms out into a T-shape or a cactus, whatever feels best for you. Just allow everything to sink here, to be heavy. Feeling that space in your outer right hip. If crossing the ankle over the knee brings again, any pain, then please don't cross. Just allow both knees to sink. Opposite side, we're gonna release the ankle, bring the knees all the way through center, all the way to the right, and again, option to cross your right ankle over your left. Arms can be out wide, they can be behind your head, like you're lying on a beach. Direct your breath. Focus. 
Do your best to remain within your practice. Stay where you are. Okay, and then slowly you can release, bring your knees back to center. If there's anything you wanna do, if there's any pose that you feel you need in order to finish practice, then by all means do. And then we'll find our way into our Shavasana, still extending out through the legs. If you need any support for the backs of the knees, a pillow or a bolster can be nice. And just close your eyes here. Hands on belly can be a nice way just to really stay connected with your breath with its natural movement through your body and cultivating that connection to the energy you've created through practice. encourage you to stay here for as long as you can so pause the video maybe and stay for at least five minutes if you can and then when you're ready we'll roll over onto the side of our body into a fetal shape pausing here keep the eyes closed and then using your hand to push all the way up to a comfortable seat stack your shoulders over your hips sit up tall through your spine again keep the eyes closed and just take a moment to feel into your belly. Allow it to be soft. Allow it to be completely relaxed. Hopefully you were able to unearth that fire, that inner power throughout class. I will close today's class with a quote as always. Talent is good, practice is better, passion is best. Bring your hands to prayer at the heart, bow your chin toward your chest, honor your practice today, and namaste. Thank you so much for joining class today. I hope you enjoyed that core flow. I hope you were able to ignite that fire um, in your belly. And yeah, hopefully it gives you a little bit of drive for your day or your week, whatever it is. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you again soon on your mat and chat to you soon. <laughs>